call and response. I'm gonna call and you're gonna respond. So grab your horn, it's time to play. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone master classes, please do subscribe and be sure to hit the like button because I like you. Now today is part two in our ongoing series of jazz improvisation. Today we're gonna to focus on getting you playing, working in your ears, and building some jazz language and phrasing using the very simple tool of call and response. This is a workshop, or a play shop, if you will. I'm gonna be playing my saxophone quite a bit and you're gonna be playing with me. This is something you can come back to again and again. This is not meant to be just watched, but something you can bring up within your practice sessions. So grab your horn. So call and response goes all the way back to the very roots of jazz and even the precursors of jazz. And we're gonna be doing that today in this little workshop. And it's very simple. I'm going to play two bars, the call, and then you're gonna respond by repeating those two measures back to me. And then we're gonna alter and have some fun with them. Now call and response in nerdier talk would be an antecedent and consequence phrase. But don't say that, you'll get your lunch money taken. But call and response is a very useful tool. And if you were in a one-on-one -on -one private lesson with me, we'd be doing this quite a bit in your private lessons. So in this little workshop, I'm gonna play two measures, then you're gonna play two measures. It's that simple. So quickly, before we get playing, let's lay down some ground rules. Step one, try to play what I play as closely as possible. You can slow it down using the gear icons or the three dots if you're on mobile, and try to figure out exactly what I'm playing and repeat it back to me as closely as possible. But remember, the feel, the rhythm and articulation is more important than the individual notes. Then, once you've gone through each section several times and you can repeat back exactly what I'm playing or a pretty near approximation, it's time to have some fun. And this is where improvising actually happens. Alter it, add a note, take away a note, augment the rhythm, make it longer, make it shorter. If I go up, you try going down. It's going to become conversational after a while. And over the next four weeks, we're gonna be doing quite a bit of these kind of exercises. So if this feels very alien right now, don't worry, you're gonna get good at this stuff. Thirdly, relax. There's no wrong notes when you're improvising, just better lines and lines that could be better. So we're gonna relax and you're gonna do your absolute best, but don't beat yourself up if you can't do it exactly. This is a process. Don't get stressed out and ruin a perfectly good hobby. And remember, in order to create in a authentic way in the tradition, we have to learn to recreate first. We recreate, then we learn to create. This is all part of the process of learning to improvise in the jazz style. So we're gonna start really simply. Now, if this seems very easy to you at first, don't get smug. It's going to get more difficult quickly. And we're gonna start with everything being simple diatonic, meaning within the key. And today we're gonna to be playing in the key of F concert, which is D on alto and G on tenor. I'm gonna demonstrate on my alto. Next week I'll probably use the tenor, but right now it doesn't matter which horn you're using. Each time we play a phrase, I'm going to give you the starting scale degree, the number of the scale step. Just kind of tuck it away in the back of your brain. I'll also give the starting note that I play each phrase on for alto and tenor. You'll get the hang of it. You're gonna repeat this as many times as you need each section. Let's begin.
So to start with, pretty simple stuff. We're just using the first five scale degrees of concert F. D, E, F sharp, G, and A on alto, or G, A, B, C, and D on the tenor saxophone. Let's extend the range a little bit and get a little bit more complicated. Again, don't stress out. You can slow it down or just approximate when I'm playing. See if you can still match the style and feel. So up to this point, everything we've played is just diatonic, everything that fits within the key signature. And even Charlie Parker played diatonic lines at time. But now let's add in a little bit more flavor. We're gonna start with the flat third. So on tenor saxophone, our B natural becomes B flat. On alto saxophone, our F sharp becomes F natural. You may know this from the blues scale, but I don't want you to think of it as a blues scale. And we'll talk about that in the upcoming videos. But right now, see if you can hear the sound of that flat third and the bluesy flavor it offers. Now in the final section, we're going to increase the range and start using those flavor tones at the same time. Try to approximate when I'm playing, you can slow it down and transcribe it literally, or just kind of do some call and response. Remember, we're building language, which is conversational. So the second time you go through it, you may not want to play exactly what I play. So if in conversation, I want to say, I want to buy a hot dog, and you say, chili, chili, chili dog, that's perfectly fine. That's a great thing to say, as a matter of fact. So don't stress out. Take your time with these exercises and do the best you can.
So again, these exercises are not meant to be played just one time through or to just watch while you're eating a bag of Fritos, which is what I usually do when I'm watching YouTube videos. It's meant to be gone through again and again, and each time you go through, you can become a more advanced player and you're gonna start doing different things when we get to this call and response. And don't worry, we're gonna be doing this a lot more in the coming weeks. You are gonna get good at this stuff, I promise. Now in the coming weeks, we're gonna add even more flavors. We're gonna add a sharp five, a flat nine. We're gonna talk about surround tones next week, which you may have heard about if you've been on the YouTubes for a while, but I don't really call them that. We're gonna talk about some of these cool chromatic alterations and get us some more bebop sounding language. So I will see you next week. Bookmark these exercises and hit them as often as you can until next week. We're gonna build on top of these exercises. And until then, go practice.